right, downtown Greens again. I'm here joined at a socially responsible distance uh, with uh, Mike Costa. We call him the bee guy because he's our bee guy. He's awesome. And he's gonna tell us all about swarms today. It is swarm season, heavy duty swarm season, right? Well, it's still a little early. Okay. I keep seeing a lot of things on my Facebook about swarms, but this guy knows more than I do. So let's talk to him about it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the camera around. I have no camera person today, so um, we're gonna just do one. Of, let, me, let me switch around. Okay, there we go. Hey, Mike. All right. So you brought some stuff to show us. Yeah, we can go over down to the car. Okay. So we're gonna walk down towards the um, towards the beehive and go to the bee mobile. The little red red car right there. Mike's bee mobile. Um, so can you just start by telling us what in the world is a swarm? What's a swarm? Well, a swarm is basically how a beehive reproduces. And it's a normal response to a hive that actually is doing well. And it, it generally comes around this time of year in the spring. I'm gonna, I brought some equipment. I always have equipment in my car just in case. And you can see these boxes are all filled with empty comb. And these are gonna be hopefully filled with honey. I'm gonna be putting these on tomorrow. It's gonna be significantly warmer because, and this relates to swarming. And this is a bear frame. They're gonna draw this out. They're gonna make they're gonna make the little honeycomb. They're gonna make it three dimensional. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I put a few of those in there, so they'll get started with the ones from last year, and they'll do the other ones too. So tell us about what is swarming again. So like now, they uh, leave. The, uh, the reproductive swarm is when the hive reproduces, and basically, the queen bee along with it might be a thousand two thousand bees leave the hive and they're looking for a new location to establish a new hive and why do they leave that is how they reproduce they're a biological organism they're impelled to reproduce so the old hive will make a new queen and continue to exist and it will have made a second hive. Now, that old queen leaves with her retinue of bees who have eaten a bunch of honey and they're all stuffed and they're ready to go. And they will leave uh, to look for a place to start a new hive. Um, and it's quite dramatic. If you're in the bee yard, and I've had this happen as most beekeepers have, the air will just fill up with bees going, it looks like all random directions. And then they'll go to a transitional point, usually in the same area as the bee yard. Uh, this might be on a branch of a tree or on a uh, swing set uh, or a hammock. I've pulled a couple of swarms. Oh, a hammock. A hammock. Oof wherever they can clump, Don't sit and there. what you'll see is a big clump of bees. Uh, it might be the size of a soccer ball or a basketball, just of bees. And inside that big clump is the queen. So it's a solid, they're all, solid they're solid. It's bees. not like they're making an outside circle no, around no, her. A solid ball of bees. Crazy. And there'll be bees flying around it, of course. But it'll be a, an impressive solid ball of bees and it looks quite impressive and to some people it looks quite fearsome but uh, I make a point of saying this is not a dangerous thing these bees are not aggressive in fact really uh, the only time that bees will sting you is if you step on them <laughs> or if you're going into their hive like the beekeeper does and poking around in there and pulling frames and doing this and that, the bees will instinctually defend their hive. They're defending their honey, they're defending their brood, the baby bees that they're raising, and that's when 
they'll sting you. Well, if you use that thinking, out in the wild where they've just swarmed, they don't have honeycomb to defend. They don't have baby bees, larvae bees to defend. So they are not aggressive at all. And also they just ate a bunch of honey. Yeah. So they're so a they're little bit more. Fine. They're not huh. interested in you at in the least. Mm -hmm. What they'll do is they'll affix themselves to this transitional point. And it might be for a few hours or it might be a day but they are going to go on to a permanent location and that permanent location is generally far away from the original hive because in reproduction they want to disperse the, their genetics more widely mm. in a geographical sense too sure. so they're generally not going to stay put so that's like their halfway point it's like a, a, a a temporary point and their what's rest stop is that scouts are always going back and forth back and forth looking for locations for permanent high and they're processing this information in the, the the communal mind to decide what's looks like a good place to go to uh, so this could this is just a temporary point but it's an ideal time for the beekeeper to, if he knows that there's a, uh, a clump of bees, to go and capture them and bring them back to his apiary, to his bee yard to start a new colony. Um, so uh, this happened last year in, in my neighborhood several times and I was able to, the neighbors would call me and I would go to the hammock or the tree branch knock them into a box and there's footage of this from uh i think uh well there was one from 2018 on the our website and on our facebook yeah 2019 yeah it's pictures. very cool to watch um, it's and wild that's how uh you can get a new colony of bees so if you would uh facebook message us if you see a big clump of bees um if we, if I can get there in time, I'll go round them up. Um, oh, I have a question. So, um, do, can I yeah, interrupt for a second? Ahead. Okay. So you said they like to, for their reproduction, you they want to be far away from their original They're gonna put high. Some distance. So if you're getting them and bringing them back, does that mess up their biological? Um, you know, if you're bringing them back to the hive next now, door? If I, brought, if I brought them back to the yard, they're not going to mind, especially given that I'm giving them a good location. Um, but that speaks to uh, one of the purposes of dispersal. They can exploit new environments. But also, I believe from a disease standpoint, it might be if we're keeping large bee yards, when one hive gets infected with something, they all get infected with something. This is more an issue with large commercial bee yards that might have dozens or hundreds of hives in the same location. So that's a geographical kind of rationale for why they want to disperse a little bit. Can we go and check out the yeah. bees? Awesome. Yeah, they, the sun came out and they started flying. They're starting to get much more active. Now the beekeeper is trying to limit or avoid the swarming because if they don't catch those bees those are workers that are absconded they're not going to make honey for the beekeeper um or they might make honey for another beekeeper <laughs> so what do you do as a beekeeper well, to keep them from you, running off i was looking into these hives and yeah. i'm looking for signs of swarming so what, what are signs what they'll do well, the most obvious one is they'll start making queen cells. And these are long tubular structures made out of wax where they will start raising new queens. And a hive that's getting ready to swarm will make multiple of these. Mm. They make a half a dozen or a dozen of these. If you start seeing that, you know they're going to swarm. Ooh. But there are more subtle signs too. Um, the queen will stop laying. And actually what will happen is the bees will run or they'll 
get her in shape to fly. Oh. So she'll lose a little weight. She'll stop laying. They like train her? Yep. Because <laughs> she's got to get flying. That queen bee has been sitting there since she got mated. She's been sitting there maybe for a year, maybe for two years without having to fly or leave the hive. Um, another sign, they'll start making more, some, you'll see more drones. And that's just a sign of a reproductive season starting. Uh, you'll see some backfilling. What'll happen is in the spaces where she would be laying eggs in the brood's nest, you're starting to see them fill it up with nectar because they know they don't need that space for an egg because they're getting ready to hmm. yeah, move. So have you seen any of those signs here with our? Uh, well, these, these, this hive, these two hives, I just split. You talking the, the closer ones here? Yeah. Okay. The idea of um, avoiding swarming by giving them more space. This hive was five boxes full and it was very big and probably would be a candidate for swarming. I s split them in half and I have to rebalance them because all the foragers, the foraging bees, probably went to the original. Location. Oh yeah, look. You see all the bees there versus the first one. There's hardly any. So I, I, but I'm going to go into the hives tomorrow because it's going to be 10, 15 degrees warmer. Okay. What time tomorrow are you going to go in? Uh, looking fin at, you know, everything is weather contingent, but it'll probably be about 1 o'clock okay. in the afternoon. And I'm going to put, uh, um, uh, we're going to rebalance and I might even put honey supers on these. And a honey super is just... That's an empty box. That's what we're, oh, looking, what we were looking at, right. It goes in the hive, but it goes on top of this so that they can start storing the honey. Okay. This one is our candidate for storing. The, far, the third one in. Yeah. Let me try and get it closer without getting stung. It's, well, they're not... I know. I'm not trying to... Oh, look. Look look at here. There's some... Dead, uh, Larva. They might have gotten what? killed and they got pulled out. Whoa, so these guys, the cleanup crew came yep. and got these dead baby bees out. So we're going to see what's going on with those. Crazy. They might have gotten chilled on a cold night. Oh, because they're, they're not a bunch in there, right? Well, or you given think they the got size chilled of before. the split, there should be a lot of bees in there because, like I said, it was five boxes. And usually when you're making splits, you're making little nukes with one-sixth of the size of this. Okay, you're gonna have to explain a nuke. Well, if you come over here, you can see the Okay, I'm gonna go around because you're not supposed to walk in front of these guys. Box. Okay, here we go. And a nucle nuke box is a nucleus colony, and this is how we make our conventional splits. It basically like a is half baby the box. size of one of these boxes. Oh. And everything in miniature, but this mm. one is empty. I just didn't want to have to carry this back to my house. So what you're going to do is you're going to take those frames yeah. from the big hive. And five of them. Five here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's and, Janet. And I'll either take the queen from this hive if I can find her, or if I can't find her, I'll take, if we get a nice capped swarm cell, which is going to turn into a queen, I'll move her with a bunch of bees and some stores, you know, nectar and honey, and I'll put it in here and they will start a new colony. So what do you do with a nuke? Well, you can expand your hives, your, uh, your holdings, or the plan here is to sell these nucleus colonies to beekeepers who need bees. Okay. And we sold about, uh, uh, we sold some nukes last year and depending on whether our success rate is, uh, we'll sell some this year. Great. And what? When does that happen? When do um, nukes like come well, online? Well, if you think if you think I could make a nuke now, if I make a nuke, uh, if I make a nuke or two this weekend, because I have hives over my yard, then uh, within a couple of weeks, if I get it, make it from a queen, if I make it from a swarm cell it'll probably be more like three or four weeks because the queen has because to the queen go has out to emerge and then she has to fly out she has to get mated provided there's good weather she has to come back and start laying eggs and when i see the eggs being laid 
that's when I can sell the new. Okay, because we're sure that I, she's I, been mated. Yeah, she has to be mated to sell it as a new. Okay, cool. Um, does anybody have any questions out there in the Facebook Live world? <laughs> um, if you have any questions right now, you can uh, make a little note and ask us. Um, ask Mike because I won't be able to answer. Um, I just wanted to show you while we're in the apiary um, how we have our boxes set up. You see there's kind of like a, a drop right here. So there's nobody walking in this area. So we have the flight path uh, clear in, in, front of the, in front of where the bees come out of the box. This area is clear. Um, how, what is the, they go out a Once certain go, amount and then they go up, is right? Once they're beyond five feet or so, six feet from the front of the hive, generally bees are flying fairly high. So you don't want to sight your hive and have to walk in front of it all the time. So Directly in front of you. Yeah. Spot. It's also facing south and east, which is a good location. Uh, it's not in the bottom where cold air is going to sink in the winter or moisture is going to accumulate. So this is a pretty good location if you're uh, looking to start bees and looking for a location for your hive. Those are important things. And for water so they don't go into your neighbor's pool. Mm -hmm. We have water over here uh, in the uh, little... Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, um, it's our carnivorous plant carnivorous bog. Plant garden. <laughs> It's got and the I colorful. have a bird bath over in my house that uh, the bees love and uh, has served as my water source for the last few years. Check out these guys real quick. Ooh, do you hear that buzzing? They are busy. Okay, I'm gonna back out of here before I get stung. Okay, well. With that being said, do you have any other tidbits of information? Yeah, well, if anybody contacts oh, yeah. us and tips me off to a swarm I can catch, I can guarantee you a, you'll get a jar of honey for it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, so there we are. I'm going to switch back around to me for a second to send you off. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And um, I don't know if you can see this garden right now, but it is the greenest that I have seen it all year so far. Um, tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow at 930. We have our first in the series of fitness. Friday fitness in the garden starts tomorrow morning. You can tune in on Facebook Live and we're going to have every Friday at 930 we're gonna have a different um, fitness class that will be live videoed from the garden here so you'll get to have the garden as a backdrop as you do your thing tomorrow's class is bar which is like a ballet slash Pilates type um, class and it's with Kirsten Kennedy of Flux Movement, and we're very excited to welcome her to the garden. Uh, tune in tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Bye.